I'm Leslie Zemsky from Larkin Square, and we hope you've been enjoying this series as we reach out to authors who have spoken to us, and maybe we'll end up talking to some authors who have not come to Buffalo yet, but can come to us virtually. So today is a special treat because not only is Molly Stevens a talented writer, she's a talented cook, and she's also a very good friend. She has wonderful Buffalo connections. She spoke here in, Molly, when were you here, October? It's like a blur, a lifetime. I know. Well, the book came out in the beginning of November, and I think it was my, my first stop on yeah. the book tour. Yeah. So the book, first of all, cheers. Here we are having a, a kitchen talk. Molly's in her kitchen in Burlington, Vermont, and I'm in my kitchen literally looking out the window straight over at Larkin Square, hoping for days when we can all be outside there back together. But I have two books which have become Bibles for me, All About Dinner, and we'll include the links to these in the, uh, our blog post, All About Roasting. You can still order both of these through Talking Leaves. They are here in Buffalo, so they are um, still fulfilling orders. They'll mail them to you, or I think they're even doing some uh, house drop-offs. So we'll include that information. So Molly, when this book came out, you created a sensation with everyone that I know. I gave it to... Um, so many people as gifts because it's not only a cookbook it's a cooking school and you empower people and um it's fantastic but before we start about talk about the book i just want to see how are you doing in this strange time of covid19 and what's different in your life and how are you approaching food wow okay well first off thank you so much for doing this leslie it's just it's it's great to it's amazing how quickly we've been able to pivot and adapt and how we're finding ways to connect. And I really appreciate you doing this. And um, I have a lot of fellow authors who are, you know, should be out promoting their books and they're not. And so this is just a wonderful way to talk about books and still connect. So thank you, Leslie, um, for doing this. So um, it's interesting. In some ways, uh, everything obviously is different. And then in some ways for me, things are very much the same. Um, you know, I, you mentioned I live in Vermont and as a writer and a recipe developer, I spend a lot of time home alone, I work at home. And so I have, you know, I'll have days, weeks, you know, periods of time, for instance, when I was working on this book where I am here in my kitchen um, by myself working away. So, you know, on the surface, some of the day to day um, is familiar to me. Um, obviously everything is very different, right? Um, and in particular right now, I should be uh, doing a bunch of traveling. I was, you mentioned the book came out in November. I did a number of events and book tour events, but with the holidays and um, everything, it's kind of contracted. So I had a second round scheduled and I was going to be in Texas and LA and you know California. And, do, and so that's all been canceled. So, so my calendar is a little uh, open. <laughs> so like a lot of people, I'm home without, you know, unplanned. Um, so, I mean, short answer is I'm doing great. I'm so fortunate and, um, grateful for you know, a nice roof over my head and a house that's very isolated. So I can, you know, it's not a problem. I can take walks in the woods and, um, and I have a deep pantry and I, I do not cook. So that part, you know, that part, I, I feel very fortunate. Nice. Um, we're going to share Molly's Instagram. One of the things that I've enjoyed about your Instagram is you reposting other people's reactions. I know just within my family, I get uh, texts. Oh, I made my, it's become a signature of friends. I made Molly's cauliflower soup. I made Molly's bean dish. So tell us a little bit about the reaction to the cookbook and maybe what is bubbling up or some of the um, recipes that you would suggest or cooking techniques during this time of you're trying to just go to the grocery store once a week and some people even stretching it out to a couple of weeks. Right. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting, but so I've been teaching cooking for a long time. And part of the reason I write books is so I can continue to teach and um, and so I could teach through my writing. So I see the any recipe th that I write, I see as an opportunity to teach a little something because the more you cook, the more you learn. And ultimately my goal is that you you, you start cooking without recipes. So it, in order to do that, you need to learn to improvise and adapt. And, and you know, we were talking before we started about there's a pasta dish in um, uh, the skillet pasta in that book that I know is a favorite of yours, Leslie. And yes, I, <laughs> it's doggy here. It's my most used uh, page. <laughs> That's great. And as we were talking, you were telling me about an adaptation you did and pretty much none of the ingredients were the, in the original recipe. I mean, except for the olive oil and the pasta and, and the garlic probably. And I love that. And to me, that's 
And, and, and then we even reference back to a dish we'd made years ago together. I was like, oh, right, that's the same technique. And so, so when, when I wrote the book, what I tried to do, um, and certainly not you know, predicting any of this, but said, here's a basic technique for a, a simple dinner. And here are ways to improvise it. So, you know, here's the recipe. You could just follow the recipe A to Z and have a solid dish. But if you like it, or if you're that kind of cook that wants to go off, or you don't have those things in your kitchen, which right now is a huge thing, here are ways to improvise and things to think about when you're improvising. And so that's what, to me, that's sort of empowering um, to cooks is you, and I love it. I love when someone, I, you were mentioning the people posting things they've made from the book and they'll say, oh, I made this, but I didn't use this and I didn't use this and I use this instead. And instead of thinking, oh, you didn't do my recipe, I'm like, yay, you're, you're, you're making it your own. So it's, it's kind of how the book, not every recipe in the book has that, but many of them, the ones that I think are like the really, you know, those back pocket recipes. There's the recipe, like risotto was one the recipe for risotto and then here are the basics so once you got it down think about these things and start to improvise nice um let's touch a minute about all about roasting again another award-winning classic i'm sorry i didn't have my copy of all about braising here but um again so many great recipes feels like roasting i know i've been using it it's like uh, less intimidating you can if you can get something into that oven then you know you have dinner taken care of Maybe to touch on what has ended up being some of the really popular recipes from roasting and how you made the shift to the new book um, all about dinner rather than one cat, one particular cooking technique. Right. Well, so you mentioned there, the first book, first solo book, I've worked on a number of, uh, you know, co cooperative books, but the first solo book was all about braising, then all about roasting, and now all about dinner. And over the, over the span of 15 years, so I'm not exactly prolific or quick, but um, the idea with roasting was that it's it's such a fundamental, if you have an oven, it's a fundamental technique and there's a um, little confusion around it. Some people think roasting is always at high heat or you know what's the difference between baking and roasting, all these things. But to me, roasting is more, it, it happens in the oven, but it can happen at any different temperature, well, a range of temperatures. And what I really tried to do in the book was to s help people figure out what temperature for what you're cooking because your your decision is going to based on like if you have a really big like thing on the cover that big prime rib you want a lower temperature so it will cook through evenly and not be overdone on the outside before the inside is perfect and so trying to sort of figure out how you you know sometimes I think about like when we grill outdoors we tend to really pay attention we're like oh we got to get the grill right and we you know we, we fuss around and move things around Roasting, I'm not saying it's fussy, but you should have that kind of relationship. Like, oh, my oven's really hot. Hmm, is that what I want for this pork tenderloin or, you know, vegetables? And I think really the vegetable chapter in both the braising and the roasting books are my favorites because, you know, roasted vegetables are just so wonderful. Candy. Like, <laughs> right? They're like candy. Yeah, if you do them right. And the differences between like there's a slow roast cauliflower and there's a high heat roast cauliflower and you get almost two different dishes when you do it that way so you really just tried to sort of unpack the technique and and again kind of the same thing with the dinner is just make it so you don't need the recipes uh, and, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. well I was gonna say the transition to the dinner book was that I I just wanted a book I mean is when you hold up that roasting book and not only is it heavy but it's got this big hunk of meat on the front and so does braising which is great I mean I, you know I, but when I wrote all about dinner I was looking for a book that was more encompassed more everyday, you know, not just special occasion and not so meat centric. And so there's grains and salads and soups and desserts. And I really wanted a book that, because as a recipe developer, I've developed recipes for, you know, everything from soup to crackers to desserts to, and I wanted a book that could represent some of that. So that's been, that was really fun. That's nice. One of the things, I mean, there's so many things I like about All About Dinner, but I was thinking without doing a cooking demo, you have some great techniques that um, are simple, but game changers. Could you tell us how you make a grilled cheese? Because I've completely changed how I make my grilled cheese after reading Molly's technique. So the grilled cheese, it's funny because when we first talked about doing this talk, I said, oh, maybe, you know, I love that we're in our kitchens and I thought, yeah, maybe I could cook, but that's too, too, that's too many things going on. Um, but the grilled cheese was the one thing I thought, because it's almost lunchtime here, and I thought. Um, but for a grilled cheese, what I do is instead of putting softened butter on the outside of the bread, I use mayonnaise. 
and I do it for a couple of reasons. One, it is not, I did not invent this. I, I, a couple other people have done it before me, but I adapted it and made it my own. Um, one, I don't always have butter out, so it's not always softened. And grilled cheese is often a meal on the fly. You're like, ooh, I'm hankering for a grilled cheese. And you have to soften the butter. That kind of takes all the, you know, the, the fun out of it. And so mayonnaise spreads easily. Um, mayonnaise also doesn't brown as quickly. And so what happens is I really believe, like if you could cook a grilled cheese slowly, you get the best because you get this really beautifully browned outside. And then the bread has this kind of it's almost it's like cloud-like and then the cheese is molten on the inside, right? So slow is the way to go. And the mayonnaise allows you to cook it. The butter will brown a little too quickly and you might not get that perfect. Plus I like the mayonnaise gives it a little bit of a tang on the outside too. Um, so that's how I make mine. Yeah, it's so delicious. And what, I mean, again, get some cheese, have some bread in your freezer. There's lunch, there's dinner. If you're feeding uh, kids or we've had yeah. soup, made soup, takeout soup, oh, I'm making a grilled cheese to go with yes. it. Is there Absolutely. anything else that pops into your head of like, uh, I know I love your breakfast sandwich technique of like a uh, quick technique, maybe even share, we just have a few more minutes, but the, the pasta technique, like start with Peel that onion, chop that onion, or what are a few things to just quickly put something together? Right, so it's called a skillet pasta because you get the skillet going and you're sauteing an onion and at the same time you get your pasta water going. And so you saute the onion and then in there you put, if you have a little, if you want some meat, you can put a little bit of meat in there. If you have some cooked leftover, you know, roast something or, or seafood, maybe you've got some greens, they can go in there and everything just softens up and cooks in that skillet by the time the pasta's done. And then I just lift the pasta right out of the skillet or excuse me, out of the pasta water into the skillet, letting some of that starchy water cling to it, and it just sort of makes its own little sauce right in there. Yeah. Delicious. You can't go wrong. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Any uh, bean? I know you, beans people have been buying like crazy, so any like quick tips on beans, canned versus dried, any of that? I use both to, and keep both. I, I, I love a, a, you know, a good pot of beans and I talk a lot about beans in the book as well and um, dried beans, I like them because you get more variety and you can get different kinds and it's, um, if you really sort of get into it, there's, there's, more, there's more potential there, but canned beans are incredibly useful to have and there's a bean gratin in the book, which is like that skillet pasta. It's a, um, it's a basic, formula that you can change and I know uh, you know delicious <laughs> what you have available too so um, it sounds like you've been cooking a lot Leslie in your beautiful kitchen there well I think we all have because we have to but it's also been empowering and um, I look forward and I'm sure you do with uh, um, who knows what's gonna be happening but again the farm season opening up that's gonna be exciting to be able to bring local produce in. I know you have a vibrant um, market scene in Burlington and the same in Buffalo so yeah. I think one of the things that this has done, and, and who knows, you know, what will happen next, but um, we sort of, we've obviously lost a lot of choice in our foodscape, so we can't just run out to the store and have whatever we want, and we, when we do get to the store, we might not find what we thought we were going to find, and so um, it, it's forced us to be a little more creative and more innovative as cooks, as cooks. and um, I do find it empowering, and I think it... Um, you know, maybe we don't need, I heard Michael Pollan the other day, and he said, you know, there's 20 different kinds of milk out there. Maybe we don't need 20 kinds of, you know, there's all this variety and, and it'll be interesting to see if we still have that. But it's, I think it's, that's something I enjoy, that sort of challenge of cooking with what we have. Great. Well, on that note, <laughs> yeah. Molly, I can't thank you enough for, uh, again, these wonderful books. So All About Dinner, if you have one cookbook in your house, this is it. As from a, not only a fan of your writing, but the recipes are just so delicious. And I think you've gotten that sense from that talk. So stay well. We look forward when we can welcome you back to Buffalo. Thanks. Oh, I was just going to say, if anybody does get the book through Talking Leaves and wants it signed, I can mail out book plates, which were Absolutely. designed by <laughs> <laughs> Leslie. Um, but really, I'd be happy to send those out because we can't have a book signing now, but we, I can certainly send those out. Thank you. And we'll include um, some information or we'll include your website and really how people can get in touch with you. So right. thanks again. It's been so much fun to check in with you and bon appetit, happy cooking and all that. Thanks, Leslie. Stay well. Take care. Thanks.